Welcome to the Skinner's Kent Academy options video. During this video you will see all of the options that are available for you to choose. And my advice for this video is take your time, listen to what the teachers are saying and then pick the most of the subjects that are best suited to you, that you're most passionate about and subjects that you would like to study in the future. Good luck. Studying geography can provide individuals with a better understanding of our planet and its systems. Those who study geography are better prepared to understand topics such as climate change, global warming, natural disasters and water resource issues. With their understanding of human geography, those who study geography are in a good position to comprehend and be able to explain political issues that occur between countries, cities and cultures. Geography has been called the mother of all sciences and it was one of the first areas of study. Select GCSE Geography if you want to discover more about your world. GCSE History informs you about the past. You get to find out about times gone by, what people did, who governed them, war, scandals. There's something for everybody. So much has happened in the history of this planet, there's bound to be something you'll enjoy studying. I'm Ed Boy at Skinner's Kent Academy and I chose GCSE History because it's a very respectable GCSE to have and it offers a wide range of choices at university and A-level and I have a deep passion for history, especially military history. It gives you a wide range of skills that universities and employers truly value such as analysing and evidence-based decision-making. In fact, a degree in history has one of the highest post-university employment rates. Select history if you want learning about the past to be your future. <laughs> um, I enjoy drama because it gives you so much freedom to do what you want to do. There's no real boundaries apart from the script and, you know, doing things where you can express yourself as a character. You're not actually you. If you're scared of being on stage as you, you're not. You're in a costume. You are someone else. And you're portraying that character to be funny maybe or sad or lonely or really happy or like really joyful whatever you want to be you're just not you uh, what I enjoy about drama is how there's so many different techniques to uh, acting and I mean if acting isn't your thing you can do like, stage lighting or anything like that yeah even doing drama classes helps you to do that and it helps you to socialize overall with other people <laughs> with our iPads which we get to use them and interact with other students so we can show each other. It's really fun because it like gives you lots of new confidence and experiences so yeah choose drama. Woo! Woo! Many of you may wonder why we use maths and how we can use it every day. But you can use percentages when shopping, for instance calculating a student or staff discount, or to work out a decrease in price during a sale. Also, many loyalty cards offer a discount after you reach a certain number. These equations may appear to many of you as rather overwhelming, but as you begin to study maths to a higher level, what you will find is they are all part of everyday things around you and me. Mathematics doesn't always involve complicated equations like these. Maths can be used in simple everyday jobs like civil engineering, chemical engineering and statistics.
I like food and nutrition because you get to be creative and imaginative in your own way. I like food and nutrition because we always get to make loads of food products and when I'm older I'd love to be a chef. Today in this lesson we are making muffins and decorating them. GCSE Physical Education is the perfect course for those who are confident in a range of practical activities and want to learn more about the factors that underpin the world of sport and physical activity. 40% of your overall grade will come from three practical activities. So it's very important before you select this course that you assess whether you are confident in at least three activities. The other 60% will be made up from two theory exams. And the theory exams will cover interesting topics like training methods, nutrition, anatomy or sports psychology. So we do a wide variety of different lessons in GCSE Physical Education. It's not all practical. About 50% of the time we'll be in classrooms learning about the theory topics. GCSE Physical Education will be a great stepping stone into careers like personal training, a sports nutritionist, even the armed forces, the police or fire service and obviously anything to do with coaching or teaching physical education. If you'd like to be involved in a practical subject and you enjoy sport and want to learn more about the factors that underpin everyday sport and you're confident in your practical ability, this would be a brilliant course for you. I chose finance because I thought I would benefit from choosing the right financial choices and I like using Kahoot in lessons as it puts my knowledge to the test. I chose finance because it's more applicable to real life. What makes finance different from all the other options that you could choose tonight? First of all, finance is split into three different assessments. You have two multiple choice exams, the first one on the individual and society around us. That's all focused on citizenship, the economy, recessions, booms, and all the different economic cycles that we'll go through. The second multiple choice exam is focused on budgeting, money management, and everyday real life skills that every student is going to need moving forward. Finally, the last unit of this subject is an essay style assessment focused on entrepreneurial characteristics that should someone choose to take on a business of their own or work in management of a business, what are the different aspects that they would need to look out for? I chose finance because it gives me greater opportunities in life that I wouldn't have had otherwise. I enjoy the discussions in finance because it helps me hear other people's perspectives. I enjoy finance because of all the things we do in lessons like cahoots and quizzes and the teachers are really nice as well. Okay, so why should you choose RE? Have you ever wondered why we're here? Have you ever wondered where we came from? Have you ever wondered why people think as they do? Have you ever wondered why people disagree so much? RE brings together all of these things. You should choose RE because you learn about world issues and what's going on in the world and how religions see it from their point of view and the different types of people that uh, are involved in it. Um, you also develop life skills and how to discuss and share ideas. You learn things for yourself, you learn things about other people and you have a chance to really think about what makes other people tick, why they believe what they do, why they do what they do. If you have understanding of that, 
you might come to your own decisions about what you believe about things that happen in life, big things that happen in life. So we're talking things that are in the news. Refugee crisis, why is that happening? What has religion got to say about that? What does God have to say about that? Is there a God? How do we know? All these questions, big, big life questions, we try and answer in GCSE RE. And that's why you need to do GCSE RE. Oh, I, um, I picked DT because it's a fun subject and I'm, I personally enjoy making and building and I'm a hands-on person and I find it very incorporative of every aspect that you need in life. I chose DT because I really like designing and making creative products. I like having 100% creative freedom over my design choices. It helps with my English, maths and science knowledge as I can apply and listen in a fun and creative way. I like DT because of how I can just adapt and put all of my ideas into one bit of paper and look at it and decide what I like and it's the best. I would recommend design technology as an option for any student that has an interest in creative design, creative flair, that is interested in part of being an innovative new subject when you leave the school and you want to move on, whether it's product design, architecture, carpentry, fashion design, anything like that, there's a whole massive opportunity of job prospects. If you pick design technology, it will really help you as well draw on all of your English and math skills as well as all of your, all of your scientific knowledge that you can apply to. I chose computer science because I've been surrounded by technology my whole life because my parents work in, were working on the railway. I know a lot about technology but I want to go further and learn more. It would really help to know how to use computers in a good smart way. I think that by doing this it will help me to become an engineer. Choosing computer science will also help in the future coursework in your GCSEs and A levels. You will learn about parts inside a computer and the functions of them. You may even be able to make your own game by learning how to code. By choosing computer science it could, it could help you to get a job in marketing or design or become the next Steve Jobs or the CEO of a game company like Rockstar Games or the manager of your own company. In computer science the topics that we cover are looking at the components that are um, used inside the computer system so students are um, able to make well-informed decisions when they're buying things and using things in the future. They also look at networks and web design. We, we cover number systems and converting from binary, decimal, hexadecimal. We also look at algorithms um, and there's a, there's a large shift towards producing very skilled um, programmers into the world and, and so and we spend a lot of time focusing on production of students who can actually program to a high level. Um, lastly, we look at the impact of computing on the world, we look at the social and ethical significances, um, how it affects the environment and things that we can do to make sure there's a, a sustainable future for everybody. Um, this is a subject where you have to work very hard and you have to keep up with all the advances in computing because um, everything changes all the time. Um, the course is 80% exam and 20% coursework and the coursework project is a programme that you design yourself as a solution to a computer system. So it could be a game or some kind of product to meet somebody else's requirements. I chose computer science because it gave me an understanding of what computer to buy in, like when I, when I hopefully go to university and what I can use for home life. I chose computer science because it's a really good thing to put on your CV and I wanted to be an engineer in the army, but I have a lot to learn. I'd like to learn more about computer science because it gives a lot of different skills like maths, programming, designing and how to do cool things in Word. And you could become the Bill Gates and you could become a millionaire. Computer science is not just for boys, over half my class are girls. Stop.
study of English literature uh, encompasses plays, poetries and novels. Uh, year 9 uh, already this year have looked at a curious incident of the dog in the night time and there is the uh, promise of a trip to see this performed in London. It's a terrific play which really helps uh, readers understand what it's like to cope with autism and uh, through the character of Christopher makes readers aware of a completely different outlook on life. Also we have the anthology which covers hundreds of years of the best of English poetry and how major events and incredible lives have been captured in their work. So this is a great opportunity for students who are taking English literature to really not just develop their appreciation of uh, writer's language, but also the kind of rich lives that have happened whilst this, uh, these works have been put together. Um, English has been really helpful for me, especially with English literature. I felt that I can now analyse the books that I'm reading and I feel that I understand them more. Your English language GCSE will see you exploring a huge range of texts from those that move us to laughter to those that move us to tears. And you'll develop a range of skills in persuading, exploring, explaining, analysing, a myriad other besides. At the end of your GCSE, you'll then be well on the way to a huge range of careers. Anything from journalism to being a lawyer, from professional writing to television production. In September, our year group will start their GCSEs and things have changed in science. We will do a mixture of biology, chemistry and physics throughout all three years. There is no coursework anymore, but there are six exam papers at the end of year 11. Each exam paper is one of the quarter hours long. There are two biology, two chemistry and two physics exams. There is plenty of practical work and 16 experiments we need to know for the exam. There are higher foundation tiers for all abilities. because it just makes you feel happy and it's like if you're feeling down or just like fed up with life then I like to do music because it makes me feel like so much better and it's just a way to like relax and like show your emotions and yeah I don't think you can do something for GCSE. I love music because it is basically my life like no matter like, other people be doing other things and I'll just be doing music and that's why I want to choose it as a GCSE. Music is uh, a universal language that everyone can access. Um, I think it's the perfect subject for all students to study uh, who like to express themselves creatively, uh, particularly uh, with instruments, also vocals as well. There's so many different uh, instruments to try at the academy. We're very lucky to have a lot of uh, tutors who come in and tutor and audience individual instruments, really broad extracurricular programme as well, and a fantastic GCSE programme.
I think it's, it's, a, it's a subject which all students can thrive in, ultimately. I like music just because I get to express my feelings through it and it makes me feel happy like when I'm really upset um, I can go and play or sing and it will just make me calm down and make me feel really happy again. I really like music because it makes me feel um, really happy and it's something that I can find a real deep passion about. So. Bonjour, je m'appelle Madame Wyatt, je parle français et hablo espagnol también. Bonjour, je m'appelle Madame Nash et je parle français et parlo italiano. Uh, bonjour, je m'appelle Monsieur Gibson, uh, je parle français et je suis professeur de français. Uh, hablo espagnol también. Hola, um, I'm soy profesora de ciencias and uh, yeah, I'm your science teacher. And yeah, I like speaking other languages has helped me, you know, work in other countries and you know, teach you. Miss, what do we have to do languages? That's a good question actually. Studying a language at GCSE is more important than you may think. 90% of the world doesn't even speak English as their first language. Learning a language could increase your salary by 8 to 20%. Learning a language can improve your communication skills. You can learn about a range of cultures. You can watch films, read books, listen to music, and simply talk to non-English speakers. It is predicted that in 20, uh, 2050, 750 million people will speak French. It's the language of the future. And they also predict that there'll be 530 million Spanish speakers, which is really important with the growing Latin American economy. Bonjour, je m'appelle Monsieur Rowe, et je joue au football. Uh, just think how important it is that Thierry Henry, Henry could speak English on Sky Sports. Could you speak French as well as that? So welcome to GCSE Art and Design. I think the best way of explaining what it involves is to look at uh, some students work and this is a sketchbook that contains some work on interiors. We set themes for each unit of coursework. This one happens to be interiors, but it could be just as easy landscapes or still life or beach or we change the themes as we go along. But we start by looking at artist work. Here's the work of a, an American artist called Edward Hopper. And this student has interpreted his work to produce an interesting title page and most importantly they've written a little bit about what they've done here and how they've done it so they're documenting the work as they progress we then ask them to do a mind map which is basically a student showing us as many different ideas as they can based on the set theme so you have the theme of interiors which is identified in the middle of the mind map but then the student's gone on to not only write down words connected with that theme but also find images which they presented using watercolours. We use a technique of collage as well to investigate the theme and develop images. Here the student has presented some work based on other images she's found and cut out and presented on a page of the sketchbook which could be um, used as a, as a research tool later in the, in the unit. And then we ask them to investigate their chosen artist a little bit more. So we have some information about the artist, we have some more examples of their work and we've got an art interpretation of one of their images done again with watercolours. And because Edward Hopper is what's known as a narrative artist, i.e. their paintings often tell a story or look as if they're a snippet from a film, we ask the students to um, invent a story or imagine a story based on their painting and then present that in the style of the artist. So there you have a nice double page based on their chosen artist. We do draw in art and design, and I think the skill of drawing is very important. So 
whatever theme you are following, you will be asked to do a drawing, at least one drawing or two drawings, based on that chosen theme. And as still life is part of interiors, this student chose to do a small still life based on shells and pebbles. We then asked them to produce their own photographs. This is really important. A lot of students would just go and do a Google search or, or some other search engine based to expand on the theme. We don't ask them to do that. We ask them to produce their own photographs so that the images they're producing, for example, uh, are original. It's their own image. This photograph, which everything is documented, but this photograph you'll see later on in the sketchbook has been developed into another piece of work. So here is the piece of work developed from that same photograph, again showing off the artist's skill with pencil. We then looked at another artist called James Rosenquist, who, again another American artist, who has produced paintings on the theme of interiors, in this case washing up draining on a draining board. As a development of that, we asked the students to take their own photographs of draining boards and, or dishwashers and then uh, tables at meal time so this still links into the theme of interiors and then we asked them to develop one of these photographs into a large painting because that's what the work in the sketchbook is for it's, it's as a research tool to develop into final pieces so we can see here a basic colour study an outline study of that photograph which has then been developed into a more formal colour study in the sketchbook and then that piece of work then is transferred onto a larger scale so that the artist is being challenged to work on uh, A1 boards and there's the finished painting. This student happened to decide to develop this into a rather effective triptych so these are three paintings based on the theme of meal times and as an effective study or effective range, effective range of studies, they work really well. And then, as an additional part of this unit, we also ask the students to work in what's called mixed media. So this is a, a mixed media study based on that first painting. So this is actually composed of things like uh, bits of sawdust for toast, cardboard for the marmite lid. This is clay, 3D, um, cup and saucer and a bit of cloth here with the knife and fork on. So that is a nice 3D mixed media development of this original painting. So that is fairly typical of a unit of work. It's the three paintings, um, mixed media piece, but that could be a print or it could be another piece of clay work. It's not just about mixed media. All of that goes together to form um, a unit of coursework. And that is, in essence, is what the GCSE Art and Design um, is all about. It's about um, coming up with ideas, presenting work in a, an effective way, and being interested. So if you've enjoyed what you've done in Art and Design in Year 7 and 8, and you feel like you'd like to carry it on, then GCSE Art and Design would be for you. Um, in terms of the potential in careers, anybody who does a GCSE in Art and Design will be asked to come up with different ideas and in a lot of businesses and a lot of places of work they want interesting imaginative creative people so any part of work any work area that demands a bit of imagination and a bit of presentation and a bit of creativity GCSE Art and Design will help you along that route. I hope that's been helpful.